You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, visited yesterday the Royal Bahrain Naval Force. Upon arrival, His Majesty was received by the Minister for Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, Chief of Staff General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, as well as the Commander of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force and a number of senior officers. Also present were Ambassador of the United States to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Ambassador Justin Hicks Sabero, Commander of the U.S. Naval Force Central Command, and Commander of the U.S. Fifth Fleet, Vice Admiral James Malloy, and the United Kingdom Maritime Component Commander and Deputy Commander. Commander of the Combined Maritime Forces, Commodore Dean Bassett. At the beginning of the visit, the royal anthem was played to welcome His Majesty's arrival. His Majesty the King commended the efforts of the brave personnel of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force in carrying out their noble duty alongside their courageous brothers from the Bahrain Defense Force to defend their country and its civilizational gains. His Majesty praised their important participation in guaranteeing the freedom of international maritime navigation and combating piracy in the region, expressing appreciation for the efforts of the commander and personnel of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force. His Majesty also met a number of officers from the Bahrain Defense Force, the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, the U.S. Naval Support Act activity in the UK Maritime Component Command. On this occasion, His Majesty delivered the following speech. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Abnai al-Azza, Muntasibi Salah al-Bahriya al-Malakiya al-Bahraini, Yatibu lana bidayatan, 
أن نرحب بضيوفنا الأفاضل بسعادة سفير الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية لدى مملكة البحرين وقائد القوات البحرية بالقيادة المركزية الأمريكية قائد الأسطول الخامس قائد القوات البحرية المشتركة وقائد العنصر البحري للقوات البحرية الملكية البريطانية نائب قائد القوات البحرية المشتركة كما نرحب بأشقائنا من دول مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية فهم اليوم كأبناء البحرين في دارهم ونقدر لقادتهم وشعوبهم ما يخصون به بلادنا من محبة ومساندة لا تنقطع في كافة الظروف والأوقات ويسرنا أن نعرب لكم في هذه المناسبة الطيبة عن تقديرنا الكبير لتعاوننا المتواصل الذي يأتي امتدادا لعملنا الجماعي منذ عقود طويلة والمرتكز على إرث عميق من العلاقات الوثيقة والتنسيق المشترك والمنضبط في مجالات التعاون العسكري والأمني والسياسي والاقتصادي وغيرها من المجالات التي تبرهن على جهدنا المشترك المخلص من أجل بلوق مستويات متقدمة من الإنجاز ذلك الجهد الذي تتوحد فيه مواقفنا اليوم نحو المزيد من الخير والرخاء لدولنا كافة ويأتي ما نشهده من نجاح متواصل لمبادرات التنسيق والتعاون بيننا ليؤكد على سلامة توجهاتنا الأمنية والدفاعية وكأمر يبعث على الارتياح والاعتزاز بما تقوم به قواتنا معا من دور محوري وبناء في تعزيز أمننا والدفاع عن مصالحنا كما نجد في تلك الجهود النموذج المشرف للعمل المسؤول القائم على الاحترافية والمهنية في أداء كافة المهام بعزم وإخلاص ومن أهمها واجب الحفاظ على سلامة الملاحة البحرية وتأمين الممرات الدولية للتجارة والطاقة والتي نتحمل جميعا مسؤولية حمايتها من منطلق واجبنا تجاه استقرار المنطقة والعالم ككل وفي مثل هذه الأوقات الهامة فأننا نجد في التزامكم بأمن المنطقة والحرص على العمل المشترك مع دولها بمثابة المرتكز الأساسي في مسيرة علاقاتنا الوثيقة التي نعمل من خلالها على تكثيف أوجه التعاون والتنسيق والتشاور المستمر حول تطوير استراتيجيات العمل في ظل التحديات والتهديدات التي تحيط بالمنطقة وتمس أمنها وبما يضمن إلزام الجميع بالغوانين والأنظمة التي تحتكم لها علاقات حسن الجوار والاحترام المتبادل لسيادة الدول واستقلالها وعدم التدخل في شؤونها الداخلية وفي الختام أكرر لكم تقديري واعتزازي مع تمنياتي لكم بدوام التوفيق والنجاح في أداء دوركم النبيل المتمثل في حمل أمانة الدفاع عن الأمن والسلام والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
Then His Majesty the King visited the Naval Support Activity Headquarters where he was received by the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the Commander of the U.S. Fifth Fleet, Vice Admiral James Malloy and Ambassador of the U.S. to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Ambassador Justin hicks Sibero. Upon arrival, the Naval Military Salute was performed for His Majesty the King and the Royal Anthem was played to welcome his arrival. And the look! His Majesty greeted a number of U.S. Fifth Fleet personnel and was then briefed on the role of the U.S. Fifth Fleet in the region and the military cooperation between the two countries. His Majesty expressed appreciation to the commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Ambassador for this kind invitation, affirming that the strong relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States is critical to regional maritime security and the free flow of commerce. His Majesty said that global security and stability depends on the free flow of commerce and ultimately its security depends on what happens in this critical region and added that this region is in turn depending on the vital strategic partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States of America. His Majesty also said that the expanding ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the U.S. was constructive for the region and a model for regional alliances. He added that there is no doubt that the continued cooperation, even through decades of geopolitical change, is deeply appreciated. He affirmed that both sides have worked to achieve the common goals and the two nations are better because of this enduring partnership. For his part, Vice Admiral James Malloy expressed pride in the visit of His Majesty see the king he said it was an honor to host his majesty and continue in the spirit of friendship and partnership that was forced by over 70 years of trust and common interests between the kingdom of bahrain and the united states he added that he expressed thanks and appreciation to his majesty the king for giving the fifth fleet a home in the kingdom he said that together we stand ready to work cooperatively to ensure regional stability and safety and to deter our adversaries
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict 16 and 17 for 2019. Edict 16 stipulated the cancellation of Clause 4 of Article 1 of Edict 17 of 2018 specifying certain commercial activities permitted for 100% foreign-owned firms to carry out. Edict 17 of 2019 stipulated the rescinding of the overall frame for higher educational institutions academic programs auditing unit as per Edict 45 of 2019 and replacing it with the overall frame for higher educational institutions institutions' academic programs auditing associated with this edict. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Libya Palace the Sudanese ambassador to Bahrain, Ibrahim Mohamed Al Hassan, where they discussed the fraternal relations between the two countries and means of bolstering them in various fields as well as the latest developments in Sudan. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister reiterated the Kingdom's stance in support of Sudan in all circumstances to preserve its security and stability and achieve the aspirations of its people. His Royal Highness hailed the signing of the Constitutional Declaration in Sudan, expressing hope it would contribute to establishing peace reconciliation, security and stability, affirming the kingdom's support to increasing cooperation fields with Sudan. For his part, the Sudanese ambassador to Bahrain expressed thanks and appreciation to his Rohan as the Prime Minister for his keenness on bolstering Sudanese-Bahraini cooperation and on ensuring the stability of Sudan, which reflects the deep-rooted bilateral relations. He commended Bahrain's supporting stances towards Sudan in all circumstances, wishing the kingdom for their progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received today the Ambassador of Sudan to Bahrain, Ibrahim Hamad Al Hassan Ahmed at Libya Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the strength of bilateral ties between Bahrain and Sudan, noting the importance of further enhancing cooperation between the two countries on all levels. His Royal Highness expressed wishes for Sudan to continue its path of progress and stability in order to achieve the aspirations of its people towards further development and prosperity. His Royal Highness and the Ambassador went went on to discuss means of expanding bilateral cooperation and reviewed regional and international affairs of common interest. For his part, the ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for supporting the development of Bahraini-Sudanese relations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. In its third meeting, the Committee for the Implementation of the Recommendations Produced by the Work Together for Legislative Aspirations Conference discussed with five official bodies the amendment and updating of laws related to government and electronic services. The meeting was chaired by the chairperson of the Shur Council's Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee, Dalal Jassim Zayed, and in the attendance of officials and representatives from the Ministries of Interior, Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Shura and Representative Council Affairs, Legislation and Legal Opinion Authority, Information and Government Authority. The Shura Council held Held a during the month of July a conference entitled Work Together for Legislative Aspirations that witnessed the participation of 500 participants and discussed seven topics related to the general state budget, mechanisms to support the labor market, education and government services, health and gender equality. So today the follow-up committee had another intensive uh, meeting with the uh, concerned authorities. Um, some of the most important points we covered is the, um, uh, the importance of having to segregate for the police stations the differences in the respective complaints, be they civil and uh, criminal, and also proper awareness, especially on the uh, hotlines uh, for citizens contacting them uh, as to, because many have expressed delays in uh, lines being answered, uh, and as well as the procedure of the complaints, uh, to know where exactly to file a civil complaint, the procedures involved, etc. This is very important to ensure that the time is not wasted for the respective uh, personnel at the police stations. Uh, with respect to the e-government, we uh, spoke with the officials. Uh, we were very impressed to see that they offer services for over 300 uh, government services. 
Again, they also have uh, what they call uh, certain questionnaires and certain uh, um, questions from time to time with the citizens regarding quality control to test this. Um, but what, of course, is very important uh, to know is that uh, we have shared with them the importance of citizens being made aware as to these services. The implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to calculate the invoices this year for the accounts of citizens in the first residence for the months of June, July, and August, according to the same period last year, bills. If less than the current year, the Electricity and Water Authority announces to its subscribers that it will amend the total invoices of the months of June, July, and August in the bills of the month of September retroactively. He stressed that these directives come within the framework of enhancing the directions aimed at the sustainability of the resources of the kingdom in order to achieve the aspirations of citizens and support the objectives of the comprehensive development process.